Hello, everybody. Welcome to Radiator Comics Studio. My name is Neil Bridot. My pronouns are he, him, his. I run Radiator Comics, which distributes self-published and small press comics, graphic novels, and zines. Um, Radiator Comics Studio is a series of online programs and print publications designed to support and expand the cartooning community in South Florida and to connect it with the national uh, comics scene. Um, Radiator Comics Studio is made possible with support from the John S. and James L. Knight Foundation, and we're grateful for their support. Uh, we are broadcasting today from Miccosukee Land. The people from whom the land was stolen are still here and are still caring for this place. Um, it's also important to acknowledge the history of African American, Bahamian, Haitian, and other Caribbean people whose labor made South Florida what it is today. Uh, we all have a lifelong responsibility to be um, better neighbors to the people and places where we're located and to work to dismantle white supremacy. Um, expressing one's ideas and feelings through comics and zines can be really powerful. And one of our hopes with programming like today's is to make those tools of expression more accessible. Um, so we're, we're very grateful to have you all here today and especially grateful and thrilled to have Summer Pierre joining us to talk about her daily diary comic drawing practice. Um, this is part of a Saturday afternoon demonstration event series called Hands On. So it's not quite a workshop, but you are encouraged to have some paper and pencils and pens nearby to take notes or to doodle or to, you know, try out techniques. Um, so uh, Summer Pierre is a cartoonist and writer living in the Hudson Valley, New York. She is the author of the graphic memoir, All the Sad Songs, which was nominated for a 2019 Eisner Award and the autobiographical comic series, Paper Pencil Life. Her writing and art have appeared in the New York Times, uh, the New Yorker.com, Pen America and the Comics Journal, among other places. So without further ado, please welcome Summer Pierre. Everybody, happy Saturday. Um, it is a dark and rainy day in the Hudson Valley, which to me is perfect comics making weather. I call it comics weather. <laughs> um, so uh, I was really excited when Neil asked me if I wanted to talk about diary comics because it's something so dear to my heart. Um, and I also feel like it is, while it's, I feel like the practice is becoming more of a, of a regular thing for everyone. Um, it still feels very undervalued and underutilized. And for me, Diary Comics not only taught me how to make comics, but it uh, has been a doorway to everything else that I've ever done. Uh, graphic memoir, um, you know, comic essays, nonfiction, you name it, have all stemmed from my practice of diary comics. So I'm really excited to talk about this. Um, first thing I should tell you is that I am a lifelong journalist, a journal, not journalist, but journaler. Uh, I started uh, keeping a diary when I was 11. Um, and actually here's my beautiful diary from when I was 11. Um, I don't remember why I started keeping a diary or asking for a diary, um, other than it was like a really crap time for me in my childhood. Um, but I also think I was really inspired for the first time by a writer, S.E. Hinton, uh, The Outsiders. If people have read that book. It was hugely, it was a giant impact on me. And I didn't know whether I wanted to be S.E. Hinton or Pony Boy for narrator and main character. And so I figured out a way to do both, which is to keep a diary. <laughs> so you are also, you're the author and you are the main character. In fact, I was reading the first entry of this, which I shall not read to you. Um, and it's very reminiscent of the first paragraph of that book. Um, and, uh, but, I'd been drawing much longer than writing. Um, and one of the things that I discovered even just through looking through here is that I, you know, I started writing, but I, of course, pictures started coming through. And so here's my very first drawing of myself at age 11. Um, I actually thought I had a chance with John Taylor, Duran Duran, I can't believe it. Um, but so the impulse to do personal narrative started very young. And uh, I started doing 
regular uh, journaling and sketchbooks um, probably in college is when I really just started doing one after the other. And I'll show you, um, I have a, I, I use, this is the same sketchbook uh, journal that I've been using for basically 20 years. Um, I'm terrified of these things not being made anymore <laughs> because uh, they're just such a basic thing. They can, I feel like I can use them as a mosh pit and they'll still hold up and be cheap enough to afford. Um, but, and I'll show you what my collection, I have a running, do this, here we go. So this is the, the last several volumes, um, but I'm up to, number 164, I number them <laughs> and date them. Um, so these are the most recent 20 and I have a, a storage box that they all go into eventually. Um, it's made me wonder about what's gonna happen uh, when, you know, as time goes on and my child has to deal with this stuff, I feel like there may be a, a ritual burning might need to happen at some point. Um, but, Anyway, it's a, it's, a, it's a practice I've been doing for a long time. Diary comics didn't come to me until about eight years ago. Um, I've been an illustrator, I've written all kinds of things. Uh, I did comics as a kid, but I tried my first graphic novel in college and was, found it so tedious and boring, I thought I'm just not meant to be a cartoonist, um, which is I'll write a novel in prose, that'll be a lot easier. <laughs> I, those were my actual thoughts. Um, so 20 years later, uh, everything sort of my career as an illustrator and an author kind of hit a dead end. All of these things sort of hit a wall and uh, I, someone gave me the gift of James Kachalka's American Elf. Um, and it blew me away. I loved it so much. It's only four panels a day. He did it every single day and it's just four panels. Very, very humble. And yet the whole world is in here. The whole world is in here. And I thought, oh my God, I wish I had thought of that. I guess I won't do that. Those are these, these are these ideas we have. You know, I'm not meant to be a cartoonist. Somebody already did a diary comic. I guess I can't do that. Uh, so I started just keeping um, a grid of drawings and because I'm a writer eventually uh, narratives started coming in and um, it has been a thing that I have has changed my life it's been one of the greatest things that, that has ever happened to me as a creative person but as a human being because I've been spent so much of my time trying to find myself as an artist or to like try to figure out how do I put words and pictures together and diary comics was a way that I not only was able to do that, but I was able to witness my life and to make something of it, which is something I've always wanted to do. It, I had finally found a home with that. So um, I started eight years ago making these. This is my first issue of Paper Pencil Life. Um, I was looking through it this morning. I haven't looked at it in years. This came out in 2014. Um, and it is embarrassing to say the least, but also kind of great. I'm kind of proud of myself. I'm like, oh, look at you try. Um, and, uh, but one of the things that I found, I, I was a mother of a very intense um, active toddler um, and I had no time for much. And so I sort of set myself a goal of doing nine panels in pen, no, um, no rulers, nothing. I just needed to get it down. And um, I didn't do it every day, but I did it almost every day. And it was basically just a way to sort of witness my life and see what I was living. Cause like we had moved from New York to a very small town here in the Hudson Valley. Um, and for the first time, I just like, didn't know what I was doing or what was happening. And it was a way to sort of figure that out. Um, and slowly bit by bit, uh, sort of behind my back, I, I discovered my voice and found out that what I was living was actually really interesting and human. So, I wanna um, read to you before I start showing you a couple things, um, a entry that really changed how I 
thought about uh, comics, but also uh, making diaries. Um, because it was a real turning point for me. Um, this it? Oh, here it is. It's okay. So I started this diary entry, and the way I do it is I draw the panels, and then I would write a narrative in all of the boxes. And so this was, and then I would illustrate that. So this is the narrative. I'm going to read it to you before I show it to you because there's a very good point to it. And so I say, what a day, working on revisions for the ILO proposal. The janky computer program I use ate my work over and over again. It sent my anger into anxiety, uh, and my anger and anxiety into high gear. Then it was time to pick up Gus. My part of the day was over. I'll admit it, some days I watch Graham go out the door to his job and career, and I feel so trapped I can't breathe. What am I doing? I need a job, a direction, something. I feel so invisible, lonely, and useless. It didn't help that Gus didn't nap, and I was in a shit mood. When I picked up Graham, I told him I needed to go for a walk. I walked along the river on West Point and asked the universe for a sign. The author I've been working with called and we talked ideas and revisions. Finally, I got up the courage and said I couldn't do anymore until I have a job. It went well and my spirit soared. It turns out all I need to do is speak up for myself. Hooray. So the narrative of that is very typical of a journal entry. It's a lot of complaining. <laughs> it's just a long list of complaints. And I went to draw that and I was just like, am I just gonna draw myself for nine boxes? Uh, you know, sitting there kvetching, you know, that's not really interesting. And so I had to think of it because comics require you to have action to have a body moving or doing something within the panels for it to work as a comic. And um, let's see if I can show this to you, if you can see this. So I drew myself wearing a cross the entire time. Um, and it suddenly got funny. You know, I wasn't just a long list of complaints like my husband's walking out the door and I'm like, oh great, who's gonna help me drink coffee now? Cause I can't bring my arms in cause I'm nailed to a cross. Um, you know, I'm running after my toddler. It's really hard when I'm, you know, got a cross nailed to me. And so like the victim, you know, I made it visible. And it was such a turning point because it made me understand the difference between just having a journal and actually making comics from life. Uh, it really, there's a, a large difference that happens. Um, comics require us to uh, show life, show movement, show action. Uh, they, don't, they don't work if they're just in a sort of interior vacuum. Um, and that for me was so pivotal because it made me understand that while my feelings are important and man, do I have feelings. Who here has feelings? I have so many feelings. Thank you. Thank you. When it comes to making comics, uh, feelings are the condiment. They are not the main meal. They enhance the flavor, they show things, they, they, they bring out color, but they are not the driving force, they can't be. Otherwise you get narcissism and an empty space and it's just like where, there's no connection that happens. So diary comics became, I started, asking myself the question like every day that I went to um, make a comic was like, what happened today? Not just how do I feel, but what actually happened? And through that, I learned to weave both action and feelings um, into a sort of narrative um, that I think that comics is sort of made for. It's, it's a beautiful way to show an intimate narrative um, because of these because of the requirements that comics have. So um, I'm a huge, huge believer in the mode. Um, and uh, let's see, what can I do? What can I show you? Um, so diary comics, I've gone through, I've been doing it for eight years now. I've gone through many phases. Um, and the last year, I'll say this, that I'm in a new phase. Um, the pandemic happened. And suddenly my child's at home, um, there's no place to go. 
the anxiety level is so intense because not only do we have the pandemic, but we have the political crisis and just the nation's not doing so well. Um, and so I don't know about any of you, but like my focus was crap. My focus was crap. My anxiety was through the roof. My sense, my larger view of life just was gone. It was very insular and very hard to do anything. And so I went back to um, my old pattern of being like, well, I have to be with my kid during the day for school. I have to, um, you know, be available for this other thing. So I'll get up very early in the morning and I'll do one page a day of a diary comic. Um, and that'll be the minimum, you know, that's like eating my broccoli or going for a run, which I did. Um, also, it's just a way of mental health way of taking care of myself. And I got to tell you, so the last year, I didn't feel like doing anything else. Um, I felt like I was a loser, like, you know, like everybody else, like not producing work. Meanwhile, every day I'm getting up at 5am and doing a page of comics every day that I'm not showing anybody, you know. Um, and I spent the last year sort of like privately going through that, which I'm going to show you sort of the process that I worked on. Um, and the other part of it was I kept it private. There were times that I showed it, uh, sh showed particular entries, but I really needed it to be um, a, a private thing, which is a new thing for me. Normally I'm like, I make something, I show it to you now. Um, so, and it really has changed. Again, it's still diary comics. It's still something that I've been doing for years, but the relationship to it has changed. And I feel like a different animal a year later after having done this for a year. So um, let me show you, I'm gonna change cameras, Neil. I'm gonna mute this. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh. Some hmm. Okay, can you guys hear me? It's still you might, you might have to try muting on your um, computer if you have both unmuted. Uh, so okay, I just closed my laptop because okay. I'm I don't want to deal with it um okay sorry everybody I went through it and it didn't work this time okay I'm gonna switch so okay so here is my most recent um sketchbook but actually I'm going to show you the one before that. Um, here's some Buddhist thought. Yep, so reading a lot of Buddhism this last year. Who else? Who else has been reading Buddhism this last year? <laughs> oh, things fall apart. Pema Chodron forever. Um, so I still do a lot of journaling, but my daily stuff, I started coming up with a pattern. So as you can see, here's a two page spread. Um, I do the day of the week up there. Uh, the date I, and I loved actually writing the weather. I don't know. I'm really into the weather. I'm not sure why, but it's a nice little intimacy, but here's a second, um, page, but that's what I, I would start to do that. I do like the spread and then, um, for each day, just have like, you know, these two. And sometimes there would be comics that would go to, um, two pages long, but, um, that's yeah but I left it so I, the minimum was a six panel comic. Um, and I also really liked having these like these side panels because I could add little details or even weather. Um, it was just a way to sort of like, I don't know. I just liked the way the page looked after a while. I started really got into um, drawing nature aspects of um, like, here's another one. Doing the rain falling um, kind of gives it sort of a sound in some ways. Um, it's my, my 
kid and I going to on nature walks every day. Um, but it, what's interesting about keeping a diary, like looking back, um, here's another one. This is one that I did. Um, this is a perfect example. What I was just about to say. So one of the things about keeping a private diary that I learned really quickly is that, you know, when you're in a pandemic, you're living life that's really repetitive. Not much happens. Um, it's you're on your phone a lot. <laughs> you're, you're, um, you know, I'd come to the page and I'd just be like, oh, frick, am I going to write another comic about how, um, you know, I'm glued to the news and I'm depressed and anxious. And the cool thing about comics when you do something like this is that um, the tool of comics sort of can take over. And so this is a day where I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to do a comic. Um, and I suddenly just out of, I don't know, it's just like the back of my mind, my phone became a character. Um, and I decided to have my phone be an active participant. And I actually had a good time writing about anxiety. <laughs> it was just like, it made me laugh. And I think this is what's so cool about the pattern of making comics is that it's, it's a relationship between form and feeling. So where um, maybe there's not a lot of action that happens, uh, you can, cartooning as a language can take over and uh, make something happen. And that's, so this last year, one of the things that was a, whoops, that was a benefit um, to doing this every day was realizing that like, I no longer use comics just as a means to an end uh, to record my life. I used it as a way to think in comic form, which is its own language. Um, and I do it in other ways and not just in diary. I, you know, I started taking notes, um, stuff that I've been reading. It's my friend, Chris, he and I draw a lot together. Um, over Zoom, but yeah, I mean, just like I started thinking in comic form. Uh, and what's interesting to me is that now that I'm back to making things that are not in diary, here I go, look at me, it's not exciting, that's subtractive, yeah. Wonder why I don't publish that. Um, here's like, again, experiments can happen when it's private. I decided uh, to get out the tarot cards um, that I had from college and draw myself in some of the images. So, you know, like here I am as the hangman, good luck with that. Um, you know, it's just like, there's a lot of experimenting that can happen. Um, and I kind of fell in love with comics again. And I'll be honest, before the pandemic, i had been really sort of not interested or not inspired. I, I felt like, um, when you have a graphic novel, sometimes like the attention can sort of drain love of the form for you. So having a private practice for me was very nourishing and it allowed me to have bad spelling and to not be able to draw well and to just really think. Um, there's, yeah, Diane De Prima, we lost her this year. Um, my sketchbook sort of just became more of a, an anchor again. Um, again, we go through phases of ways we do things. Um, since I'm showing you this, I might as well. So here's the, um, I wanted to show you how I started doing it. So you can see the difference. This is what I used to do every single day. Um, nine panels, very rough, no, you know, there's no rulers, nothing. Um, and I use a pen. I always use a pen because if I didn't, I'd be, I'd never get anything done. I'd be erasing it all the time. Um, so it became like a real, here, that's the one I was just talking about with the cross. Um, also these banshees of anxiety started coming up in my yoga practice. So again, the language of comics has its own life and it can be an amazing way to sort of, um, yeah, just think, to think and ponder and look at the world. Um, it's, I don't know, I don't know what to say other than it's 
been an amazing, amazing, amazing practice. Um, yeah, like here's another one. I actually really like this one. Uh, this is about going to see the Vanderbilt house um, and the trees there are pretty amazing. Um, but it's just these little things like, and I don't think about them again, I get it done and I don't think about it again. And then at the end of the year, um, at the end of the year, it's like, I look back and I go, oh, I actually lived a life. I, you know, you, you think at the time that it's all chaos and then you look back and you're like, no, actually things happened. Um, the other thing about diary comics is they ask you to, you can't write the whole day. And so that was another thing uh, that I learned to do is just to choose, think of simple, what's one thing that happened that day? My cat Inky was chasing a mouse. That's all I did. Yeah, I drew her chasing a mouse and that's it for the day. And yet collectively it tells a story. Um, page after page, day after day. Um, and some of these I may redraw and color and make into the next issue of Paper Pencil Life, but I also may not because um, there's a lot of my family life in here. It's another thing about doing it privately that you can include people that you normally wouldn't. There's Alice Notley, that's my page. I'm, I'm a huge reader of poetry um, and Comics allow you to talk directly to your, your heroes. That's lovely too. You can have actual conversations. Um, and Alice Notley gave me some tough love. I told her her hair was pretty and she was all, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> Cause that's, I think that's actually what she would say. So lots of like, here's some notes from a poetry reading I watched on Zoom. You know, we're all doing things on Zoom right now, like this exhibit A, here we are. Um, and so I take notes in comic form. Uh, here I am, this is when I was waiting to, to vote. Um, the long line going down the street. Uh, let me turn this around. Yeah, so riveting stuff, I know. Um, but uh, it, I don't know, like I feel like there is a way, uh, it's the perfect way to, to learn how to do this. Like if you are someone who's been curious about comics, I would highly recommend making a diary comic, you know, a practice of it, uh, because it will start asking you to do things that you didn't know you knew how to do. Um, one of the secrets about people who make art all the time and who draw well, is that they're often avoiding things that they don't draw well. They're, we all have a list of things that we can't draw. We're like, yeah, I don't, I'm not gonna draw a horse. I'm not gonna draw a car. Um, and I had spent my life up into diary comics um, avoiding so many things, avoiding so many things. And my work was very uh, limited as a result. And diary comics asked me to draw things like environments, uh, landscape, cars, things that I would never have had the guts to do. And I now feel comfortable making those things. I feel like it's, it taught me to trust myself. Um, and that's all, you know, sort of self-confidence is, is a uh, sense of self-trust. So having this practice. Now, one thing I did want to say is, um, I had a panel at SPX once about diary comics that I was on and a young person came up to me and asked me, I want to start a diary comic. I want to do a diary comic, but I live at home and I have a really toxic family. How do I get around writing about people uh, that may not like how I depict them, which is the question for autobio all the time. And one thing I said to her was like, well, you don't have to make it public. It can be a private thing that you do. Um, and she, she looked at me like, cartoon says what? Like, she just was like, I'm sorry, I don't understand your ways, you know? Um, and she has haunted me ever since because I didn't really have a, a comeback for that. But having gone through many cycles of this um, and, real, and done public versus private, um, I think one of the things that I think about is that, you know, because diary comics are um, visual, we, we sort of uh, assume they should be public because they're visible. Where, and so a lot of people, and they're easy, they're quote unquote easy to do, right? Um, 
and we all need social media uh, presence and we all need, you know, all of those things, but um, which have value, I want to say, and I've done it. So I'm not against that. But sometimes when we're starting something, we need the autonomy of no audience um, because it gives us permission to be a wreck, to make mistakes, to, like I said, draw terribly, spell everything wrong, um, make your uh, make your mom look like a jerk. You know, it's we need these permissions um, to do that in order to innovate, to be curious. Uh, public diaries. Um, I started really thinking about this on the way over here um, to this. And the public diaries are great because they, you know, people often do them because it's a way, again, to, to put content out, but to build an audience. It's a way to, um, when you have it public, you know, it, it makes you show up all the time. It makes you do it. Um, but the problem is that after a while, it becomes sort of performative because it's not about the experience of learning and seeing and observing, it's about putting stuff out there. Um, and it just changes the relationship. And I think this is why people get burnt out on it. Um, you do it for, to see what other people think of you, not what you think of yourself. So it has its challenges. Um, and I think that it's really hard once you've started making things public to dial it back and go private. It's, it's a pretty radical act these days, I have to say, in order to make anything private. Um, but I'll say after a year of doing a private practice and after, before this, I was doing everything public. Um, I just feel like a stronger cartoonist. I just feel like I have more, um, I don't know, more elasticity. I feel I'm more curious about where I can go versus how I can be seen. It's very different. That's a very different relationship. Um, and uh, it's a longer term way of doing it. And now that I'm doing less diary comics, I'm still doing it when I can, but you know, my time is still very limited. And now I'm doing all of these, uh, this other work. Um, it, yeah, it's in there. It's in my work. I feel more confident. I feel, um, you know, I, I have more joy doing it because I have a private relationship to the language first. Um, whereas before I was doing it just because I wanted people to think I was, I was pretty. <laughs> um, and it's just a very, very different relationship. Um, that being said, thank God for the people who are doing it publicly because there are many amazing people. Um, and during this pandemic, we've all needed company. And so um, I don't con condemn um, anyone wanting to do it publicly. We're all lonely. We all need to see each other. Um, so thank you to those who are doing it. Um, two in particular that I'm enjoying right now uh, is Ellen O'Grady and um, Carl Krumpoltz are both doing daily work that are, it's wonderful. It's really, really good and very different, very different sensibilities, um, but it's, they do stuff on Instagram. And then um, Carl has a book, uh, has a, puts the series out in print, which I actually prefer because I feel a little bit more intimate with it. Um, so, and just before I forget, I um, have made a list of all of my favorite inspirations and things that have made me have ideas about comics and diary comics um, on my blog. There's a, a link to it that I think Neil's going to put in to the chat. Um, but yes, so um, let's see how much time do I have left? I'm going to, yeah. So I'm going to do, I'm going to show you my process and then we're going to do questions. Like I'm talking more than I wanted to as usual. Well, uh, okay, this is always interesting. I did this once before where I held my phone, I was not able to get a tripod because they're all sold out, which I found out Neil actually bought them all. Um, all right, let's do this, let's flip it. Okay, so this won't be the most intimate thing I've done because you guys are all watching, but I usually draw a panel as you can see like this. Um, and there's a six panel 
And I put the I put the day of the week up here, start up. Saturday. And I put the date here, 227, 21, rainy and foggy. I like the weather, it's just a nice little detail. And then I leave this blank for a title. I used to title it before I started. And then I always regretted that. I always felt like the comic became about something else <laughs> as I was going. So um, then I put, then I start writing the narrative. Um, this morning, Poppy and Graham. went out shopping so I could prepare for the comic presentation. See, you guys are already in there. And then Poppy is my daughter. Poppy wanted to get a particular dress. I wasn't sure she could find. It's already terrible. Okay. <laughs> um, I worked all morning until I came back. It turned out. to be a success. All right, so I'm not sure what I wanna put here, so I'm just start drawing. Um, one of the reasons why I, I usually do a little filler in here, so if I draw a blank, if I don't know what I'm gonna put here, I start, it's like a Linda Berry thing where I keep my pen moving. Um, and it usually makes me come up with the next step, so. I'll draw my husband, Graham and Poppy saying goodbye to me. This is very um, difficult drawing this with you looking. It's <laughs> my husband, Graham. Poppy, who's not this tall, but it's a comic. So what are you gonna do? Just gotta fit in the frame already. Okay. Here I am. Are you guys riveted by this? Gosh, never felt so self-conscious. All right. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to get it down. People are loving this, by the way. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. All right. You too. All right. Um, let me write down. This is about an earlier conversation that I had with Poppy. So I put in a little qualifier. Have her talking. Okay, she had this dream for this dress. Uh, 
All right. Probably fill this in more after I. I want a long white dress. I want a long white dress, one that flows. Um, because we don't have much time, let me skip a panel and fill it in later. But um, yeah, I was like, good luck with that. Uh, long white dress. I wasn't sure, you know, if she could do it. So um, I'm going to draw the last panel just to so get an idea of what I, what happens. I'll let it. I'll cheat. There she goes. She's so proud. Couldn't believe it. It's like this beautiful, she shows up and she bought a beautiful white long dress today. The exact dress, okay. And here's me plopping out of how wrong I was. So that's the punchline. This is extremely, um, extremely crude version of what I do, but it gives you an idea. I go through the process of what happened. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll probably draw a picture of me here coming, you know, drawing, thinking about stuff and hearing them come in. And then Graham saying, we got a bunch of dresses. It's great. Let me, and having Poppy off camera say, um, let me show you my new dress, mom. And then here it is, the most beautiful thing. And I, I want to show how shimmery she was with it. I just can't believe it. She got it at the Gap of all places. I can't believe it. Um, so that, that gives you an idea of what I do. Very crude. Not I, I usually spend a little bit more time and I usually don't have a ton of people or hold a phone up <laughs> while I'm doing it. Um, but it gives you a sense of what I do. It's very organic, it's very off the cuff. Um, and it's really simple. And I, I'm gonna title it new dress. I realized I forgot to add a title, but uh, probably new dress, you know, or the white dress. Um, and that will be, you know, something simple that uh, I'll, be able to doesn't seem like much but then you know it adds up after a while it's this is a collective experience that adds up to something more um so neil i'd love should we do questions i feel like we have a little bit more time for questions yeah, yeah, yeah. um that was fantastic that was great okay. uh, it's always exciting to to see you draw um so um, I, I wanted to start with a, a question. Again, if anybody yep. does have a question, please feel free to either um, click the raise your hand button in the participant section or type your question into the chat and I'll ask the question for you. Um, I guess I wanted to, to start off kind of asking. So I, I you gave a, a similar presentation to this um, for the Society of Illustrators mm -hmm. in October, I think on Instagram Live. And I watched that and loved it. Um, and, and it inspired me to like get the exact same uh, sketchbook and a pen oh, and, yeah. and try it out for myself. And I like was making diary comics for a week and then it just sort of like slipped out of my, my yeah. practice. And then I picked it up and then it slipped out again. And like, yeah. there's some like unfinished pages. Um, do you run into that problem? Have you run into that problem? And like, do you have advice on how to make it an actual like practice 
Yes, thank you. That's a great question. Of course, I have all these notes and things I didn't follow them at all. <laughs> so, and that was in my notes. Um, yes, I do. And yes, I've experienced all of these things. So here is what I suggest. So tips for making diary comics a practice. Um, make it as easy as possible. Use a pen. Um, ha have one place that you do them. Um, something that's not precious. Uh, Linda Berry recommends a comp book for those who are just beginning. So it's less precious. There's lines through the, the pages. And I actually, I, I recommend that as well. Um, but get rid of all the things you need in order to get done uh, a lot of time. Make it as short as possible. If you don't have a ton of time, do two panels, do four panels, make it very small. Um, and if you want to get it started, I think Neil, like what you did is actually perfect. Um, give yourself a, a, a time frame. Say, I'm going to do this every morning for five days. Don't promise yourself more than that. And then regroup. Um, if you are already a cartoonist doing diary comics, but you want to kind of redo your, your process, again, what is doable for you? Um, do it at the same time every day. For me, mornings were the only times I could do it. Um, and, you know, do it every time, every, you know, make it part of a, a habit. Like you make coffee or tea every morning. Like do it while you're brewing your coffee. Do two panels while you're brewing your coffee. Do it at a time that's the easiest time for you to do it. So, um, and also one of the things that blew my mind recently, again, it's very simple. Um, one of my favorite, uh, sort of my heroines of diary comics is the illustrator um, and cartoonist, uh, Jane Porter. She's in England. She's got a wonderful style, beautiful work. Um, she did a video recently of her diary comic practice and her work is gorgeous, but she said, if you don't do it every day, don't worry about it. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I, oh my God, really? You know, it's almost like we need permission. I feel like we get into these guilt processes where it's like all or nothing. And it's like, no, yes, do something. Something is better than nothing. So if you haven't done it in a week, do it right now. You know, say, I'm going to set the timer for the next 15 minutes and I'm going to do a, like a four panel comic. Like make it very doable, whatever rules, if you're not doing it, then ask yourself, why, what is it that I'm putting in front of me? That's making it hard. Maybe you hate drawing yourself, then draw yourself as a cat, draw yourself as a bear, you know, make it less intense for yourself, make it fun. And you'll anything that helps you feel curious. That's really what I, I can't recommend curiosity enough. Um, does that help, Neil? Yes, for sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, so there are some questions and I'm gonna go Great. through them in the order in which I spotted them and that they show up in the chat. So first, um, Malia asks, uh, and feel free to not answer this question if it like mm -hmm. if you don't want to. Um, okay. uh, do you do drawing sessions with your daughter, comics or otherwise? Um, I do. I do on occasion. She is um, kids. You know, I think one of the most hilarious things, like I was a kid that was drawing all the time. And I think we have this misconception that kids are just art in the making all the time. My kid is very like, yeah, mom, you want me to do that? I'm not doing that. So like I have tried many times to like have these moments and there have been times that we have been able to um, sometimes, you know, pre pandemic times. One of my favorite things to do while we were waiting for dinner is to do a jam comic together. We've done those where, you know, I draw a grid and she starts it and I, you know, I kind of answer her. So we've done we've done those things together. Um, one of my favorite things that we did together. I'll see if I can pull it real quick. Um, recently was that we made little one page mini comics. So there's these little booklets that you can do. Um, and I don't know if you can tell us, but this is a comic that she made called I'm Telling, which I'm sorry, but who needs an, I mean, that is a perfect title for a mini comic. I'm telling, I'm already interested. Um, so we've done things like that. Uh, but as she's gotten older, the less 
interested she is in mom driven activities. <laughs> so yes and no, I'll say that. Cool. The next question. question. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, the next question is from Natasha asking, and, and there was also a question, so I'm going to combine some questions. Yeah. Um, could you tell us what the pens you use and mm. what your sketchbook is? Yes. So my sketchbook is a um, Canson sketchbook. Um, I think that's all it's called. It's just a classic. Can't you show the label real quick? Um, yeah. So that's it right there. I actually left the label on just for this this group so I can show it to you. Um, super simple, uses all kinds of media. It doesn't, it's it's really, and it's affordable. And so I've been using that for, I mean, 25 years at this point. Um, the pens that I use are Uniball, um, Vision. I also have, I do another one um, that I actually travel with. I started doing diary comics with, do I have a one here? Yeah um this pen which is a uniball vision elite uh this is the only pen that doesn't leak on an airplane so if you're traveling i highly recommend it um you can also buy cartridges instead of buying the pens but you can find them at drugstores you can find them they're very easy to find i'm i'm a huge believer in accessibility like don't make it special like just dive in with whatever you have, uh, what's easy to get and because then it's easy to sustain that way. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, we do have two questions um, from, from audience members who would like to ask them themselves. So first oh. we're going to hear from Jane. Hi, hello so Hi. much. I really, really enjoyed that. That was very, very interesting and inspiring. It was lovely to see you working on a comic live. The question I've got is quite a philosophical one. <laughs> and this is something that I think about a bit. And the question mm. is, do you ever find that you do things specially, things that you might not have bothered with, especially because you know it'll make a good comic? You think, oh, can I be bothered to do that? And then you think, that's going to make a great comic, so I'll do yes. it. Oh, you mean like an activity in life? An activity in life. Does the comic change mm. how you live your life because you want material for your comic? I think it is if it's public. I think when I when it's been more public, I have yeah. thought of those terms. But right? not, not about when it's because like mine's private, but I still sometimes do yeah. things. I think it'll even though no one's going to see it for me. I know. One of the things. So by the way, everybody, that's Jane Porter. She's amazing. Um, one of the things that Jane Porter did in one of her uh, diaries that she showed in her video, which also blew my mind, was I can't remember if you were traveling, um, but you decided to do a boat that where you could take the oh, yeah. lid off. You made yeah, it an interactive too. thing. And again, yeah. this is a private diary. So like no one's interacting with this except for Jane. <laughs> and <laughs> it was so amazing. And I thought, that's right. You can do that. Like so it's lift, a place. Lift the flap. Yeah, you can lift the flap, but you can make it. This is what I mean by curiosity. It's like creative curiosity is the thing you want it. That's the thing you want it to live by. And so I think what Jane, even what you're talking about right now is a thing that you're like, I really want to experience this. You know, I really want to experience this both in life, but I want to experience drawing it. Yeah. And I think that that's, that's definitely a part of living. And I think travel, I love travel diaries and so much. And I've done one when I went on, I went to Paris and I knew I was going to make a comic about it and I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait to draw, <laughs> you know? So there's things like that. Travel definitely is something that I, um, I think of in terms of like, yeah, I want to do that because I want to draw it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming, by the way. Oh, a pleasure. <laughs> I've been looking forward to it for weeks. <laughs> Thank you, Jane, for your question. Um, so uh, our next question is from um, Smar. Smar? Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for this. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. This was lovely. I, I can't wait to start drawing. Um, yeah. I was wondering if you could talk about uh, the phase of your diary comics a bit. You mentioned, oh, <laughs> sorry about yeah. that. Um, 
and whether you want to play with yours a bit more because yours is pretty standard but you've mm -hmm. changed it so i was wondering what the thinking behind it was yeah Oh, phases. I mean, I think that like, if you do anything, I think anyone, and I don't know where you are in it, but I think if anyone doing anything for a certain amount of time, you do, you go through phases of stuff. And the first phase for me was like discovery and feeling really committed to doing nine panels every day or every other day and just seeing where that went. And then I started publishing it. And so then it became this sort of, um, public thing too I was like oh I can't wait to for people to hear about this you know but while also trying to maintain some sort of like personal thing um and then I you know that sort of tapered off because I privately decided to um make a graphic memoir which actually I couldn't figure out how to start it and so I was like well what if I started like a diary comic and that's what I ended up doing is the beginning of that book is like I'm here doing this this is what I've been doing this morning and it started the whole thing. So, you know, those are a couple of the phases that I went through. And then um, this current phase was sort of like, I don't know why, but I needed to make it private. Like the thought of making a public diary just was exhausting to me. It felt really bleak, um, especially in, in terms of the pandemic, which is strange because I, you know, like everybody else, I'm feeling isolated and lonely and all of those things. Um, but every time I tried to do something publicly, it just felt like I just felt even more tired. And so I realized I needed something that was a little bit more nourishing. Um, and the, the last year of cartooning for me uh, has been about unbuckling all of the performance all of the stuff of, of sort of um, tap dancing in public. Uh, and I think there's so much of that that happens and for good reason, um, especially with the internet, it makes it so easy to like be in public and to make it happen. But for me, it was starting to damage the trust that I had um, in my work. And I was, I was really not enjoying it anymore. I wasn't, there wasn't any curiosity. So it took a long time to unbuckle that. Um, but, and there were times where I was just like hating on myself, you know, while I was doing this private, uh, process, but what's amazing now is that now that I'm back to making work that isn't diary, um, and I don't have as much time, so I'm not doing it every day, but I'm, I'm doing it when I can, but, um, all of that year of like unbuckling the performance, unbuckling, making, getting surprised again, being excited to see what, what came out or like, oh, that's a thing. Oh, okay. Let's do that. And, and amusing myself is now in that other work. And I'm just back to enjoying comics again, which I honestly didn't know if that was going to happen. So hooray. Does that answer your question? I hope so. Yeah. Great, thank, thank you, Smart, for your question. Um, I wanted to do a time check. We've got about five yeah. minutes remaining. Okay. Um, are you cool with one more question or yeah. do you want? Okay. Um, so uh, the, the next question is from uh, Michi and I will read it verbatim. Um, that was amazing to watch. Uh, do you actually start without knowing how it will end? Yes. Yes. And uh, that's what I was just talking about in terms of unbuckling the performative part of it. Um, because when comics can sort of hum, when you can sort of trust the language of it, sometimes you're just like, oh my God, that's hilarious. Or like, I didn't know that's where it would go. Um, I recently, this summer, I was talking, you know, what a lame subject, but I was talking about my cat's new food. Okay, that's as boring as it gets. But what I started talking about was how my cat is obsessed with it and meowing and meowing. And I started joking that with my husband that he's, he's singing um, Mr. Tambourine Man every time you know, he wants the food, he's jonesing for it. So then I was like, I'm gonna make a comic where he actually has a guitar you know, and is singing this every single time he sees us, he jumps on the couch and like starts playing guitar, you know. Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play this song for me. And it was very, it sounds like, um, I'm like seeing crickets here. No, <laughs> but it was really enjoyable 
at the time it made me laugh. It was a surprise and it made me laugh. And uh, again, it didn't have to be public or whatever, but without that private uh, time, it's like the comics could surprise me. The language of it could, could show up and be like, I'm going to crack you up right now. So yeah, it surprises me all the time, which is fantastic. Cool. Great. That seems like a great place okay. to um, <laughs> end the conversation. Um, I am. Thank you so much, Summer, for this. This was really fantastic. Um, I am pasting links into the chat uh, for Summer's website, including the link to the, the blog post um, about uh, keeping uh, a diary comic. I'm also pasted in a um, link to uh, Radiator Comic Studio. Um, because and I did want to uh, mention a few events um, that uh, we have planned. We're you know continuing to do more events like this, including um, uh, more uh, you know demonstration events. Um, in the future, we'll be announcing our our March schedule soon. Um, but I did want to mention that um, every Friday from four to six p.m. Eastern time, we host Open Studio, which is a quiet work time for you to work on your comics in the presence of others. Um, and then also uh, on um, Sundays, uh, March 7th and March 21st at 5 p.m. Eastern, we host a semi-monthly social event called Cartoonist Coffee. Um, if you make comics, please join us for casual small group conversations with other cartoonists. These events are all um, free and, and open to, to any experience level. Um, and then also, uh, I did want to mention that um, part of Radiator Comic Studio was um, publishing uh, Sun and Sand Comic Anthology, which is a free comic anthology um, for uh, comics in South Florida. Uh, you can go to um, sunsandcomics.wordpress.com to um, read the comics uh, either online, you can download a PDF, or you can request a physical copy. And if you cover the postage, we'll mail it to you. Um, so those are just some of the things that Radiator Comics Studio is doing. Um, thank you again so much, Summer, uh, and thanks to everybody for, thanks, everybody. for joining us. Um, I hope everyone has a safe and joyful week. Um, thanks. I love you all. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.